This is the unboxing and complete features description of Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master motherboard. It's part of the series called Building a Home Server based on AMD Ryzen 3900X CPU. If you want to see those, you can click on a link in the description below this video and it will take you there. Now let's have a look what's inside the box. So this is what you get inside the box, the motherboard, bunch of stickers, user's manual, CD with drivers and utilities, two quick installation guides for the CPU and the cooler, Wi-Fi antenna, four SATA cables, special Aorus sticker, two black Aorus velcro straps, the noise detection cable, so I'm guessing that's probably a mic, then the addressable LED strip adapter cable, RGB LED strip extension cable, two thermal probes, three M.2 screws and three M.2 standoffs and a G connector. That's for connecting the cables from the case to the motherboard. Before we get to the motherboard, I'll unpack some of the cables and stretch them to see how long they are. So here is a close shot on the cables. Remember that you can pause the video at any time and find out whether the length of the cables fit your needs. What is worth mentioning is that these two SATA cables have 90 degree connectors and these two only the normal ones. The length of the Wi-Fi antenna cable is 80 centimeters long it didn't fit into the frame and the length of these two thermal probes cables are 90 centimeters. So let's have a look at the motherboard. Now I'll take out the plastic. I'll use the anti-static mat before we continue. Let's have a look at the rear I.O. first. So as you can see, it has an integrated shield, so there is no need to put it in place ahead of installing the motherboard. Here is clear CMOS button, which allows you to reset BIOS into factory defaults. Q flash plus button, which allows you to update the BIOS even when the CPU, memory or graphics card aren't installed. That's a useful feature. You plug into this port your USB flash drive with the BIOS, press the Q flash plus button and it updates the BIOS. Of course the power has to be connected at all times. Two Wi-Fi antennas. The Wi-Fi chip which is connected to two antenna connectors is an Intel Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax. It supports 2.4 and 5 GHz dual band and it also features Bluetooth 5.0 module. Four USB ports 2.0, two USB ports 3.0, three USB ports 3.1 type A, one USB port 3.1 type C, two and a half gig Ethernet LAN connector, one gig Ethernet LAN connector, golden plated, audio jacks 
and optical digital output. The most noticeable thing on this side of the motherboard is this VRM heatsink, which has large fins array with direct touch heat pipe. More fins means more surface area for heat dissipation, therefore better cooling, which helps the longevity of the parts and the stability of the system. So I'm glad they did it this way. Under it, there are 14 phases of VRMs, 12 for the CPU and two for SOC. So that's quite an overkill. Here is the AM4 socket, which supports second gen and third gen AMD Ryzen processors. Four DDR4 DIMM sockets supporting up to 128 gigs of memory. That means 32 gigs single DIMMs are the max. It uses a dual channel memory architecture and supports uh, also ECC memory modules. Now I'll turn the motherboard so that we can see some of the ports better. Here is a system fan header, two 12 volt 8 pin power connectors, both shielded, quite an overkill, CPU optional fan header, CPU fan header, noise sensor, so that's where you connect the noise detection cable which was included in the accessories, but before you do that you have to remove this jumper, it's supposed to regulate the fan speed according to the noise in the case interesting idea here is a voltage readout point so that's where you connect the multimeter that's for people who want to overclock RGB headers addressable and non addressable let's turn the motherboard again let's zoom in a little bit This is a power switch and a reset switch. These two are BIOS selectors. They allow you to choose between different BIOS modes. The first one is called SB switch and it allows you to choose whether the dual or single BIOS mode is activated. When it's in position one, as it's now, that means that the dual BIOS mode is activated. The second switch is called BIOS SW and it allows you to select whether you want to boot from the main BIOS or the backup BIOS. When it's in position 1, as it's now, that means that the main BIOS is active. There are also two LEDs which show you whether the main BIOS or backup BIOS are active. This is a postcode display. It helps you with potential debugging. There are also four status LEDs which correspond with it. So they show you if your CPU, memory, GPU and the OS are working properly after the system is on and running. So when everything's fine, none should be lit. The boot LED, which is this one, switches off after entering the OS. So that's the last one to switch off. Here is the main power connector, 24 pin three system fan headers. This connector is for connecting the temperature sensor. So altogether there are two of them. This is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header. It's called USB Turbo Charger because it supports quick charging technology QC 3.0 for smartphones or for tablets. It works both with Apple and Android. It's for connecting the front USB 3.1 Type-C port on your case or panel. And depending on the mode it is in, it's able to provide up to 18 watts of power. Not bad. This is a heatsink with a fan for the chipset. The fan speed can be controlled. It operates in three different modes. Silent, balanced and performance mode. It spins around 2000 RPM. Here are six SATA ports. They support rate 0, 1 and 10. And when the third M.2 slot is occupied, only four of them work. That means these four. 
and these two are disabled. So let's turn the motherboard again. Let's start from the right with a front panel header. It's for connecting the enclosed G connector, which is part of the accessories. It helps you to connect the cables from the case to the motherboard and it makes it much easier. If you slide it in now, it has no resistance because there are no cables connected to it. So you can take it out also very easily. Above it, there is a clear CMOS header. It allows you to reset the BIOS into factory defaults when shorted. So you can short it with a screwdriver or anything metal for a few seconds. And you have to make sure that there is no power connected to the motherboard while you're doing that. Here are two USB 3.1 headers, each can provide two USB ports. This is a system fan header. This is a temperature sensor header. You can connect there the temperature sensor which was included. Two USB 2.0 headers, each can provide up to two USB ports. This is a TPM header. TPM means Trusted Platform Module. It is a microchip which provides hardware-based cybersecurity and is also used for authentication. So you must have one if you want to use it. These are two RGB headers, one non-addressable and one addressable. And this is a front panel audio header. These capacitors belong to ESS Sabre Hi-Fi Audio. It uses reference deck ESS9118, which is high quality. It has dynamic range of 125 decibels and the resolution 32 bit 192 kilohertz PCM. Quite good. Besides the ESS Sabre chip, there is a second audio chip, Realtek ALC 1220VB, which is hidden under this cover. One thing I skipped is this undocumented connector labeled LED demo. You wouldn't find it in the manual. I actually had to google it. It's a header and it features a micro JST 125 2 pin connector. It's for an external power input to illuminate the LED capabilities of the motherboard without actually having to power it. I'm guessing that it's for the viewing purposes at a show or shopping window or for testing the RGB before it leaves the factory. If you power it it cycles through all the colors on the motherboard and it requires 5 volts. So now we know what it does. The PCI Express X16 slots are equipped with ultra durable PCI Express armor. The X1 slot isn't. The first two slots are connected directly to the CPU, therefore they can run at higher speeds. If you populate only the first one, it will run at x16 speed and if you populate both of them they will run at x8 speed each. The third PCI Express x16 slot allows you to connect cards which are x16 in length but they will run only at x4 speed because this slot is connected to the chipset and not the CPU like previous two. There are also three PCI Express 4.0 M.2 slots which have heatsinks on them. According to the manual, they are called M2A, M2B and M2C sockets. The top one is connected directly to the CPU and therefore it's the best one to use with PCI Express 4.0 M.2 drive. The other two are also PCI Express 4.0 X4, but they are wired to the chipset. And that's the limiting factor. The chipset is connected to the CPU by X4 lane, therefore if you run both of them at X4 speed, you won't be able to achieve it effectively because of this limitation. I don't see this limitation as something that would slow me down in my particular use case, because almost 8 gigs per second is fine with me. But for those who are thinking of using M.2 RAID 0 or 1 config, and would like to achieve speeds around 10 or 12 gigs per second, uh, this needs to be taken into consideration and maybe it may point you towards Threadripper and TRX40 chipset which would take care of this problem. 
When it comes to the third PCI Express M.2 slot, it's worth reminding that if you populate it with SSD, it will disable two SATA ports. When it comes to the compatibility of these three M.2 slots with SSDs, these two support four sizes, 2242 to 22110, that means from 42 millimeters to 110 millimeters. And the third one supports sizes from 2242 to 2280, that means from 42 millimeters to 80 millimeters. You might be thinking that this could be a problem, but 90% of consumer NVMe SSDs are 80 millimeters long, so this isn't really an issue. The last thing I want to mention while we're on this side of the motherboard is a dual channel setup for memory modules. I forgot to mention this when I was describing it. There is a scheme which tells you to put them in sockets A2 and B2 if you're using only two of them. Let's flip the motherboard to the back. As you can see, it has a large metal back plate. It increases stability and acts as a heatsink. It stiffens the motherboard and cools the back of the CPU VRMs. So I hope it works because I'm not sure about the airflow. But anyway, it's a bigger dissipation area, so it should help. As you can see, the board is ERP ready. ERP stands for energy related products. Sometimes EUP shortcut is used, which means energy using product. European Union has decided to establish a regulation which defines the power consumption for the completed system. It states that the AC power of the completed system shall be under 1 watt in off mode condition. There is also a stricter version of this the ERP EUP 2.0 and it lowers this requirement to 0.5 watts. The goal is obvious, to solve the global energy consumption problem by saving the total power consumption of all households. The practical outcome of this regulation is that you can enable this ERP feature in BIOS. Of course you need an ERP compatible power supply. If you do that, it will start saving you energy, but it will also disable some wake up functions in S5 state. S5 stands for shutdown. And these disabled functions are PME event wake up, power on by mouse, power on by keyboard and wake on LAN. So if you don't use these wake up possibilities, there is no reason not to enable this function and save some energy when your computer is in standby. This was one of those more information heavy videos, so thank you for staying till the end. I hope you found here what you were looking for. If not, use the discussion below this video and ask me whatever you like, I'll do my best to answer. If you want to know more about this motherboard, I'm making another video where I'll be building a home server based on AMD Ryzen 3900X and using it. So if you're interested in topics like RAID configuration and future expandability, definitely go see that one. This video is already longer than I expected, so I'm not gonna make it any longer. Thank you for watching and see you next time.